My lords, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Transport Fever 2 Hard Mode. Starting this episode here outside of Burton upon Trent and the passenger station there that we constructed in the previous episode. As we can see, one of our north south connection trains here just picking up some waiting passengers before departing now on its way towards Portishead over the bridge that we constructed as well, which I still absolutely love. Maybe been a bit uh, over the top with it, but I really am uh, pleased with how it turned out. Definitely am. So, in terms of uh, plans and progression for today's episode, given that we're starting here in Burton, that should give a bit of a clue as to what's on the agenda for today, and that is to attempt to stimulate some nice growth in Burton. And if we get some time at the end, I might even finish the southern main line that was started last time around and have that continue on towards the town of Racknell, I believe it is and that will be our first connection on the southern main line obviously the north south connection notwithstanding so let's make a start we're going to bring up the user interface I have the date set to one time speed once again after forgetting to resume the date in the last episode and then having to set to two times speed to compensate so we're as we should be now so burton upon trent at the moment we are supplying some of the fuel that it requires in fact we're doing a pretty decent job with that 50 percent is okay the other thing we require over here is obviously the food now if you remember a few episodes ago I did suggest that it would be this farm over here, or this food factory, I should say, down here at Wareham, which will be supplying the towns of Burton and Bracknell. There are no other towns on the southern landmass that require the food, so it would make sense for this to supply these two. The issue we have with that, however, is getting the grain down here to be converted into the food. There's no farms or no grain production farms available on the southern landmass. So I did a bit of planning beforehand and I've decided I'm going to go ahead and connect this farm here at Market Raisin onto the cargo line and then have the grain shipped down into the far corner of the map before naturally bringing up the finished food into Bracknell but first of all into Burton. So I've made a few preparations in this area. I've had to just reroute the road a little bit to allow space for a cargo passenger, sorry, a cargo station to be squeezed in and still have a connection. And my plan is we'll have a link line into the station just for access purposes. And the lines will then bridge over our canal connecting to the cargo line that we have here the trains will then obviously run down this line at this junction here we'll expand it and have another line that branches into this southern cargo main line the trains will then follow this link track here which we might want to upgrade pass through this station continue down this line sharing it with the oil and the uh, yeah the oil shunt trains passing through the station before branching round into where uh, a food plant that's my plan at that point then we'll bring back the food this way again sharing this line and we'll just deposit the food at this station where we can set up another truck delivery run we have a spare platform here to then finalize the whole production chain by delivering it into the town of Burton itself. So let's make a start. I've got it all mapped out in my head. I think it should work okay. So we want a cargo station. We only need one platform on this, at least for now, but we do want to keep it maximum length with standard tracks. And we'll put it just on the corner of this road, just here. Obviously being mindful that we need to bridge over this in such a way that the canal remains open for shipping but also leaving enough room to get a tidy link line in just here for access purposes let's just quickly smooth off the terrain around the station so it looks a bit more natural there we go and we'll first of all 
get this track over the canal and connected in just before the bridge there we can just see it in the distance so because of the uh, the canal we are going to need to either in fact i think we're at 20 meters i believe that said just there if we could get this up to say 22 i think that will be or even 25 if we can 24 that'll be fine luckily we have a ship just about to pass underneath which we can then use that ship as a dummy to test if there'll be any clipping on the underside of the bridge. Looking at that, I don't think there would be. Let's get the other end of the track down to 25 as well, like that. Yes, looking ahead, that leaves plenty of space for the ships to go underneath without worrying about the masts or the funnels hitting the underside of the bridge that we are constructing. But we will change this bridge out for the iron bridge there. That's still good. In fact, here's another ship just now. And as we can see, we have plenty of space. So let's go ahead and confirm that bridge there. What we're going to do now is gently come down back to ground level and connect in just prior to this bridge here. So what we'll do is we'll create the junction first of all. And there's the train line that we're aiming for, so we can make sure we get a decent angle on this. And if we have this remain the same height as the track we're departing from, that should enable us to have a nice smooth overlap on the two tracks. And if we can get it to 75, all the better. How does that look visually? It could drop down just a little. Maybe like that, up a bit. There, I think that's just about perfect. So there's the one. We'll double it up straight away. And just check in the second track. How does that look? It's Oh, there's this ever so slight overlap. I think it's going to be good enough. Might redo it off camera, but for the sake of the episode, that's fine. And now we want to make sure we're aiming roughly straight at the bridge, which we now are. And what we'll do is we'll give it a test and see what a straight connection would look like. Not too bad. Obviously, it's got to climb up, which it is, but it's stretched out quite nicely. And it is 75 miles an hour the entire duration, so we've got full speed. At some point, these lines are going to connect together and we'll go into a single track over here and we'll connect it in before the bridge that makes the most sense and if we bring it in fact if we come off immediately after the bridge can we get a decent speed 70 72 miles per hour isn't a bad speed at all is it that catenary mast might need moving but i think it's going to be okay there we go before we forget, we'll quickly put these signals in for the junction that we've just created here. So these are going to be one-way signals, and we'll have one there for the junction and a counterpart there. We could probably remove that signal, and in fact we might want to just bring that one back a little. And if we put it there instead... It'll still clear the junction, but it should mean the trains wouldn't overhang if they did have to wait at the signal. And just to double it up, we'll put another one there as well. This way, coming down the bridge, we have a signal there for the junction, but we can push that forwards a little now to say just there. And then disregard that one. That is too close to the junction. I don't like what's happened with the bridge here. I'm going to redo that, but again, I'll do that off camera. Or the little tidying up, I'll try and keep it off camera as much as possible. Although maybe we'll have the occasional episode of detailing and tidying and the likes, because it can be quite interesting, I know. But enough about that, just quickly finish off that junction there. And then finally these ones here, so we'll have one there. One back here to clear. And we could probably squeeze a block in here as well. However, if we had it... Oh no, that is on the right side. I thought it had switched over. 
Yes, that's okay. We'll put a two-way signal just here. That way the play the planes, the trains can start to come forward. Okay, so that's done. Now we want to extend this junction to have a connection this way. And I think do we want to go with I'm just having a you know we will double track it. I was toying with the idea of keeping it single track, but we'll double track it. Let's just remove that road so it doesn't interfere in any way. Where is the switch point? There it is there, we can see it. So if we immediately come off after that switch point, and again, make sure we keep the same elevation, that should guarantee us a nice, nice junction in terms of the overlap. And that looks okay. Let's just verify that, however, using the duplicate track or the second track. Yes, that's fine. So we'll have to do the signals on this one, but what we'll do first of all is just bring it out a little and you can start now following the lay of the land like that. Now we'll do the signals while we're here. Back to one way, so we need one there and we'll have one there. That one now needs removing and instead this signal will also protect this little bit here. The clearing signal up there is probably okay. This one may be a bit short, so I'll just push it forward just a fraction to there. And we'll have one there to clear the junction for trains heading this way. Okay, so now we can connect it in up here. If we can maintain good speed and maybe temporarily have this as a four lane track. Hopefully this inner radius will also be 75. The, ooh, it's ever so slightly slowing down there, but 74 is acceptable. So we'll come over like that and if we run just past the next set of signals, then we'll look at merging these tracks together. Okay, there we go. So now we need to remove these signals because they are going to have to be repositioned owing to this new junction that we're putting in. What's the best speed we can get here? 73. Do we get any more? Nope, looks like we're going to stick with 73, which again is pretty much perfect. So there is going to be a little slowdown, but it's nothing too dramatic. Now let's do the signals there and just there. That's a sufficient enough distance, I think, to clear the junction without any risk of trains backing up over the switch and blocking everything else in. We'll put a short block just here. And in fact, we'll double those up. And then this one here is now the clearing signal for trains returning this way. And we'll just manually put these blocks in. It's only a short stretch of track, so there's no need to use the auto signal feature. There, that will do. Okay, very good. So now what we're going to have to do here. Well, we're not going to have to do that. Where is the switch? There it is. We're going to now add a second track down here. It's quite slow, as we can see, but it's not too far off of 50 miles per hour. So it's still within acceptable limits, I think. And just basically double track this entire length of line here. What we're going to need to do is amend this station a little, which is fine. First of all, we're going to have to, well, these are going to be passed through platforms. So we don't need a diamond, but we do need to have them connected into this track. And hopefully we can do this without any speed loss. Oh, I saw 74 there. I think that's, oh, we've got 60 here, but again, in fact, now that I think about it, 
given that the outer platforms are where the uh, where the trains will be dropping off, or at least that's where they'll be coming to a stop, we can ever so slightly adjust this so the main line or the active line is the one that goes to the pass-throughs and then we can have a slow connection onto the outer platforms which shouldn't be used from this direction. So I think that's now 75 throughout. Plenty of space to get a nice smooth connection into the tracks there. Or at least it would be if we were clicking the right things, of course. There and there. Yes, wonderful. And then this will just come in. I'm not concerned about the speed, but I would like it to be reasonably tidy. As I said, no trains should really be coming this way anyway. And no trains will be heading this way. If they're coming through the station, they'll be utilising these platforms here. But that's the connection there. I don't think there's any need for the train or the track to wiggle the way it does. So let's give it a bit more room and try that again. Are we still wiggling unnecessarily? I don't think so. I think that's a lot better. I think it maintained 75 miles per hour, don't get me wrong. But it just looked a little strange, there was no need for it. Now that looks better, yes, happier with that. Right, now we can signal up here. So we're going to need to have a... That signal needs removing. But we will need... Oh, so does that one. So we'll have one here. Just like so. And one here. Yes, there's nothing here that could cause a train to block in this section of track. It's not being used at the moment, of course, but we may as well keep it future-proofed. That may be a little bit short, but we'll keep it. We'll run with it and hope for the best. And then this will clear the junction that way. And in fact, we'll just block that like so. And then we can double track from here all the way through to the station or to this junction here, which, as I said, is likely never to be used. A thousand meters is more than enough. We'll start from here all the way back. And then we're duplicating it that way as well. So there's our blocks. So now the trains are going to pass straight through here. And to ensure we know that's what we're doing forevermore, we'll put a signal there and there. And we'll put a signal, well, we're going to need one there anyway to protect all of this. That's all okay. We've got the blocking all the way down here already. Which platform are our trains using here? So they're using those ones very well. I think what we'll do is actually swap that over to the outer platform. Like that. It's not going to impact our train at all, as we can see. He's just rerouted himself nicely. Speaking of platform selection, obviously the the latest news for the planned development was released, I think, yesterday. And it does include the functionality for trains to be able to automatically assign themselves to a an empty platform regardless of the orders set up which i think has been a long time coming and something i'm desperately looking forward to so it'll be interesting to see that uh, mechanic introduced it'll certainly make things a lot easier what do we have here quite a few new trains we have one that costs zero and another um i think we'll not use those that's that's cheating, but we have new bus, several steam trains, and I guess that was a selection of diesels and electrics. I'm not sure. We'll have a look. We're going to be selecting a train soon anyway for this line. Speaking of which, we can now just quite simply sweep straight around to the food production facility. Like this. So it is climbing quite a bit, as we can see. But it is a reasonably long distance, uh, over a kilometre. No, that's the radius. Yeah, it's over just under 1.5 kilometres. 
And the last thing we're going to need, and I think we will use a terminus for this. There's no point not using a terminus. It's not going anywhere else behind us after all. Uh, do we want two tracks? Yes, we do, because we are going to have one train dropping off. And there's going to be another train picking up. Let's try that. We'll have to very quickly put in a road connection. Just so there's accessibility between the industry and the station. If we can get it so the road isn't all lumpy bumpy. That'll be perfect. Yeah, that's good enough. So there's a connection. But just to tidy it up, we will bring it into this road here. That's better. So yeah, we've got this connection now. This is a Wareham food, product, uh, food Factory. So all we need to do now is connect this into the line. Good speed, yes. Very nice. And um, the last line. Hang on. Have I gone the wrong way there? I certainly have. Well, let's try that again. And in fact, we could probably go back a little bit further than we were to keep the track a little straighter. As we saw, we weren't losing any speed, and we're still not. But it's it had quite an exaggerated shimmy. It still does, but I don't think it's as bad as it was initially. You're in there. Perfect. We will need a diamond over here, of course. And we'll have a, a fair distance from the station. That way, if we have excessively long trains, the back ends won't touch the switch. There we go. Very high speed diamond there. And we want a signal there. A couple of bi-directional signals here and here. And then we can now just use the auto signal feature. And we'll drop this down to 500 meters. As we saw, it's about a kilometer and a half, this stretch of track. Maybe a little more now we've completed it. But we'll give ourselves plenty of room for a bit of blocking yeah that's lovely that should be more than more than enough and in reverse and again we'll just put some signals like that so we know forevermore that this is just a pass-through station there okay lovely that should all be ready to go just quickly rename this to Market Raisin Farms. And now we sh Oh no, the last thing I want to do. This won't be a functional line in terms of having any trains run down here. This is just to provide access, of course. We want to put a line in here. That's horrendous. Let's go parallel first. And in like that speed doesn't matter it's only for access purposes that is awful i know it's not being used for anything but we may as well make it look nice that's better okay yes so now we can set up the whole production chain here so we want to go for market raisin farms we're shipping the wheat which is of that color we want to be fully loaded we want to wait indefinitely and we are only taking wheat we are coming here we are yeah that's fine we are not loading anything but we are unloading the wheat we're just brought with us are we doing the nice things here yes we are that's all working as i anticipated it would yep yeah, of course very nice Let's quickly name this. So this is Grain Freight Market Raisin to Wareham. Did that take? Yes, it did. There it is. So now we can purchase the train. So let's have a look. We can have a quick look at those new locomotives that we just unlocked as well. Here we go. So that we unlocked in the previous episode. What do we have here? 65 miles per hour electric trains, 90 mile an hour steam trains. How are they any different from the class sevens? 
a little bit more power and tractive effort, and obviously an extra mile per hour in terms of speed, and not that much more to run. So maybe we'll swap the standard class 7s for the 9Fs. Lastly, we've got this diesel, 75 miles an hour. Okay. Power isn't bad. And it, but it is obviously cheaper to run because of that. I'm quite tempted to have a go at this one. NOHAB AA16. It's the European licensed version of the American Standard F Series locomotive from GM. Well, every day is a school day. So let's add that on. We want the cargo wagons now. Gondolas, of course. And if we aim for somewhere around 200, I think. 208, what's the speed like? It's a little sluggish. Maybe we'll just drop it down to 195. That's still quite sluggish because there are some gradient changes and bridges to deal with here. Okay. Hmm. We could do that. Or would we be better off using the RE44? It's worth thinking about. I think for now we'll have that. Because it is it can run in both directions, so they don't have to flip anymore. We'll try it and we'll see what sort of uh, income or not it generates. Okay, can you not see the line? Of course you can't because I had to select the depot. Now you can. We'll have a look at the train as she comes out of our depot over here, nestled snugly in the little wooded area by the quarry. Doesn't look too bad. Hopefully it'll do a job for us. We'll see what sort of uh, line rates and income it's generating. What we can do now is set up the delivery into Burton. So we're going to need to, well, we've got that infrastructure in place. All we're going to need in Burton is a drop off. Our food is all along the northern edge. So let's have our drop off in this little side street here, I think. And we'll rename that to Burton Commerce Drop-Off. Quickly rename this one while we're here as well. Now we can set up a delivery line before we set up the train. So we're going from here. And it's the darker colour for, uh, for the food. And we're coming up here. How are you doing down here? Okay, so you're looping around there, but we can very quickly put in a waypoint to prevent that. So let's have a post box. Back to the line. Wonderful, that's much better. Yep, that will that will work quite nicely. Fully loaded. Wait as long as necessary. And you are taking food and nothing else, and you're not unloading anything there. Quickly name it up. Food Delivery Burton. Let's purchase a small handful of... That's a tram depot, you idiot. Good effort. Yes, let's purchase a small handful of trucks. It's got to be the Opal Blitzers. Yep, the Opal Blitzers. And we'll go for four of those on your way so they're going to be waiting for a while because we don't have the line or the train set up is that our train no that's an electric train of course it is you can tell by the uh, the icon anyway the last thing we want to do is set up this line here that is this color yes it's separate from the grain that's fine and again we're doing the fully loaded as long as needs be taking food loading nothing Loading nothing up there. What platform are you opting to use? That's the wrong station. Well done. Okay, so yes, that's right. We need to put a second drop-off platform up here. So we want standard tracks. And there we go. And now the platform itself. There we go. We need to connect all this together 
and we shall do that nice and easy. I don't mind about the speed. I think that'll shouldn't cause any aggravation. So we'll just go with it. And just for completion's sake, we'll put that there again. Likely never to be used. Perfect. So you are now dropping off on platform four. Yes, I don't think there's going to be any problems with our other train that unloads, but we'll see what happens. The line needs renaming. And it's food freight from Wareham to Burton. Yep. A train for this one. Let's go for... We could try that, maybe. It's quite cheap to run. Not a great deal of power. And it is a little slow. But it is nice and cheap, which is quite appealing. That one, the power just doesn't cut it at all. That's probably outdated now, the A35. Quite tempted to go for this just so we can say we've got it on the line. And we want cargo wagons and these are box cars. How's that? That's not bad. It will need expanding and upgrading in the not too distant future, but to start with it'll work. I think, I hope. There we go. Let's have a look at this train as it departs. Very much got a look of a little shunt in service. So perhaps we'll relocate the locomotive onto a different line in the future. For now, I think we're going to be okay. How far along has our grain train got? We're looking for a diesel icon. And it's just coming up to the farm, as we can see. How much food do we have waiting? 100, that's grain, not food. 112. So it'll be a little bit of waiting around here. That's okay. We might want to put a signal there. That way our food train can wait here. If this guy is still waiting to be fully loaded or to receive a full load before leaving. That way it's not going to wait here and block anything wanting to head up towards Nuneaton. Which includes our logging trains. Which we want to keep running because they're nice money earners for us. I think we'll leave it there for today. I don't think we'll finish off Bracknell just because we'd also have to do the the inner city transportation links as well to get to the station and back. So we'll do that in the next episode, I think. And once we're connected up to Bracknell, we may as well then continue straight on to Whitnash. And I'm setting myself a little limitation or restriction, if you will. And the limitation is... I am not to supply a town with the goods they require until they have a passenger service set up. So, for example, we couldn't just now come straight to Bracknell with the food as it doesn't have a passenger station. I don't know why I'm doing that, but I am. In terms of coming out from the other, other direction, we've only got Marlborough to hit that way, but we could if we wanted to Mm, no, I would say we could also connect to Market Raisin from Burton, but it would be a bit spaghettified with bridges over bridges. So I think we'll not bother with that. Instead, what we'll likely do is have a line from Marlborough to Raisin. And then we could have a little link into our passenger line here. To connect to Nuneaton and in fact we could go both directions and also come into Portishead as well. All right so I think yes like I said we're going to end it there for today. Hmm, I don't know that one. So we'll hop on board a new train and it's going to be the grain haulage train which is still waiting for a full delivery or a full load. So let's just accelerate the time just so it can pick up the full load. Or rather than that, let's just send it on its way. There we go. So let's hop on board. We'll 
first of all have a look along the length of the train get a nice appreciation for it come over this side I think there we go it doesn't look too bad it's going to give us a good indication as to how it's going to handle the gradients and what sort of speed we can expect to run at for the majority of the line hopefully we don't drop too much off of 75 and if we do we can regain the speed fairly quickly anyway let's now assume the position if you will of course if we click the ball I would like to do that one day but the uh, the detailing in the cabs is a bit sparse which is fine and also the fact that it cuts out some of the scenery as you can see the vanishing trees uh, makes me feel a bit strange so we'll not do that let's jump back on top so yes I hope you enjoyed the episode today if you did please consider leaving a like down below and if you haven't yet subscribed please also consider doing so as well to stay up to date with future releases you may, may also be interested in the RimWorld series that we have running in parallel with this one let's just ignore the fact we're about to plough through the bridge structure never mind about that I'll sort that out off camera as discussed along with a few other minor cosmetic changes as well so yeah there we go all that remains for me to say is as always ladies and gentlemen take very good care of yourselves it's tata for now